Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, what we're looking at here is we're looking at um, the uh, top 10 programming languages that I've determined uh, for jobs in 2016. And I've looked at a lot of different sites and I actually compiled a bunch of different lists to do um, analysis on each one of these jobs. And I looked at um, you know uh, websites like Indeed.com, uh, GitHub, some of the other blogs and, and uh, that were written out there um, by other companies like uh, Inc.com and, and a few others um, like Mashable. Um, some of those, their their research is a little bit suspect. Um, in my list, I do actually give some sort of insight into how I feel as a programmer in the programming industry. So um, I am a senior programmer for a, a major corporation and just what I've seen. So I do give a little bit of my own uh, input in this. And um, ultimately, this boils down to just really what my opinion is and, and you know, backed up by you know what I deem um, to be good uh, good evidence you know for these uh, these arguments but um, so it, nothing is ever set in stone it's very difficult to try to determine the best programming language um, each language is um, is good at different things so um, there's never any one-size-fits-all programming language uh, but this particular list we're looking at mainly um, jobs like uh, what are the trends for that particular language and then how many jobs are, are there right now uh, in that particular uh, for that particular piece of uh, technology and then um, we also look at how many uh, different types of industries are actually using that particular language so is it just used for web or is it just used um, for gaming or um, you know th those so those also get accounted into the list so um, there's tons of good languages out there and um, just another disclaimer, I didn't mention SQL. Um, typically when you're doing web development um, or any, any sort of development that deals with a database, you're expected to know SQL. Um, so there are SQL admins out there that are very good at SQL, uh, MySQL experts and DBAs and things that are out there. Um, this list doesn't really include DBAs. So um, if you were like a, a dedicated DBA for your team, you know, there, it's definitely a good industry um, and SQL would be like a top 10 language for sure but um, once again for most of these languages uh, for most daily tasks um, that I've run into in a corporation you're expected to know how to write some SQL so you may not have to be an expert in it you have to at least know some of it so that's why I didn't include that include that in this list uh, nor did I include uh, HTML or CSS because um, if you're doing any sort of web development you should understand what the box uh, model is um, you should understand um, you know, basic CSS styling and HTML syntax. So um, those are not included either, but they're definitely a top 10 um, that you must know if you're going to do any sort of web development. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and um, go down uh, through this list here. So number 10 on the list, and this is um, definitely wouldn't have been there if I, if I counted SQL, because SQL most likely would have taken Perl's position. But um, as much as people want to say that Perl is dead, it's still not dead. It's actually still used. Um, throughout, even in a lot of major corporations like um, Slashdot still using it. Uh, I believe Amazon is still using it. Just a few years ago when I was just getting into programming about five years ago, Perl was the main language of Amazon.com. So I have a hard time believing that all their code has been updated and uh, they've removed Perl altogether. Um, Perl is on a fast track towards a decline just because of uh, the amount of market share that's being taken away by Ruby and um, and Python, and even before that, um, what PHP was taking away from Perl, because PHP is so much like Perl, except it's just for the web. Um, however, um, Perl is still around. There's still quite a bit of servers that are actually running on Perl. There's a ton of text scrapers and automated batch programs and things like that that are still written in Perl. And if you're a Perl programmer, um, you, you have some hope in that Perl 6 might do some, uh, it might cause some uh, re revitalization in the Perl community. So the Perl community is not dead. It's it's on the decline. It's still number 10 on this list. And um, you can even see on like the TOB index um, that Perl, even, every time it drops out of the top 10, it can, comes right back the following month, it seems like. So Perl is still around. That's my argument there. Uh, number nine is C++, and you could argue that maybe this goes a little bit further up on the list. Um, C++ is definitely having a resurgence lately with like C++ uh, 14 is um, uh, one of the sta uh, the standards that you know people point to and say, look, you know, C++ is becoming easier to use, easier to handle the garbage collection and memory management. Uh, C++ is widely used in gaming engines. Uh, if you're going to be a game programmer, definitely C++ is, uh, is a good option. Um, it powers the um, Unreal Engine. And um, just pretty much uh, 
every old um, sort of physics library out there. I mean, there's going to have some sort of uh, C C plus um, plus API for for using it. So um, C plus plus is definitely um, a good language to learn. It's a very difficult language, especially when you compare it to some of the more modern languages like um, Java or C sharp or or even Python. Um, C++ will definitely be a challenge for a lot of people out there. Um, so yeah, you have to be pretty damn good to, to be a C++ guy, and um, you're, you're, there's always going to be work for you if if, if you do uh, know that. But it's number nine on the list just si simply because of uh, trends and and you know where we're headed in the future. All right, number eight on here is Objective C and Swift. Now, unfortunately for Objective C, similar to Microsoft C Sharp, it's only available really on uh, Apple and iOS. However, Apple and iOS is extremely popular. Apple is one of the most um, valuable companies in the world, uh, if not the most valuable. I don't, I haven't remained up to date on that in the last few months, but um, it does toy with being the most valuable company uh, in the world. So there's obviously a lot of demand. People line up and buy the latest, greatest iPhones and um, iMacs and all that other crap that they sell that they can sell without even trying. So. Um, if you want to cater yourself towards the Apple environment, Objective-C and Swift is always going to be able to uh, have a lot of opportunity there for you. I, I mentioned both of them together because Swift is Objective-C's um, replacement. It's very similar to, it's like Python's, um, it actually takes a lot of influence from Python and it's Apple's, um, it's Apple's effort to make an easier programming language than the Objective-C language, which um, can be difficult. It's kind of uh, grouped in the C++ category as far as of just um, you know the the amount of effort to to try to learn and master that language. All right, number seven is PHP. A lot of people be like PHP was on the list. There's still a ton of PHP jobs out there. No matter what you guys want to say, there's a lot of freelance work, a lot of blogs, a lot of everybody that's that's um, writing. Uh, a lot of the e-commerce stores are, are written in PHP. Uh, if you look at e-commerce, there's really no web-based alternative. Um, to something like you know open cart or magenta or any of these other you know numerous PHP shopping cart platforms um, C++ or no, I'm sorry C sharp doesn't have anything out there as far as I know I mean and some of the options that are out there they're so difficult like with Python and um, you know they have things like Django Oscar and, and uh, Satchmo and they just all fall short of what a PHP shopping cart is so until some of these websites become just as easy as a WordPress plugin there's going to be a lot of PHP opportunity out there, a lot of PHP jobs, because it's just so easy for any noob to go out there and, and start up a PHP site. Number six is Ruby, and almost primarily because of Ruby on Rails. Um, if you look at just Rails in general, it's going to crush um, Python Django, and um, it would even give something like Node um, JavaScript a run for its money. Uh, as far as just the, the sheer amount of um, R Ruby developers, Ruby opportunities, and jobs and startups that still use Ruby, um, so that it's number six on this list. Um, but it is kind of one-dimensional in that it's just for the web. Even though you can use Ruby for other things, it's just it's relatively uncommon. Number five on the list is uh, Microsoft C Sharp language, and um, just similar to Apple. If you're um, catering towards a, a Windows environment, which is still like 80% of the OS market or more, I'm not sure what that specific number is. It's just a guess. Um, but they definitely dominate the operating system market, and they have for decades. That's why Bill Gates is the richest man on the world, on Earth. And um, that's the reason why Microsoft makes like $23 billion every year in profit. Um, Microsoft is a huge corporation. They invented the C-sharp language. It's very similar to Java um, syntax when, when they first came out. Um, but since that time, C Sharp has just made a lot of excellent improvements. It's a very good language to know, and if you're going to do any sort of Microsoft development, it's a it's a must for you to to get involved in that. Number four is just regular old C. Um, C is the godfather of all these languages. In fact, every language I've I've mentioned so far is written on top of C. So. Uh, if you know C, um, you know all programming languages, and, and you can be a, a hardcore hacker with C. Um, however, you're not going to find a lot of corporate gigs um, in like the web world, because um, a lot of people aren't trying to write that raw C. C is a very uh, low-level, um, pedal-to-metal type of language where um, you're very close to the, the hardware, and it, if you're trying to you know hack like an embedded system or something like that, you'd probably be... Uh, pretty good going with a language like C to do something like that. 
um, as opposed to any of these other languages I've already mentioned, which is a, a much higher level, meaning much less code needs to be written to do, um, you know, your typical everyday programming tasks. Um, however, if you're ever trying to push the envelope of what your particular language is capable of doing, um, C would be a good language to learn, um, if because it's just it's like like I said, it's every language is written on top of it. So if you know C, you can alter any language um, that it's written on top of it. All right, number three on this list is Python. A lot of people probably wonder why Python is emerging so so much lately. Um, just recently, Python was named the number one uh, language, introductory language being taught in all IT schools. It actually took that from uh, its rival, the Java programming language. Uh, Python can be object oriented, but it's also it can be functional. Um, Python is used not just for um, for programming like GUI apps, like you know regular desktop apps, it's used for the web. Uh, there's even um, mobile pushes for it lately. So um, Python is actually found in a lot of different uh, domains, and in the web world, it's um, there's numerous Python web frameworks out there, uh, including Django, which is the biggest um, Python framework, and uh, that that actually powers um, websites like Instagram, uh, Pinterest. Discuss um, discuss the uh, commenting form that you see on like all the major sites out there. And at one point, they were getting like seven billion hits a month or something like that. So they were getting a ridiculous amount of traffic on um, a Django um, front end. But there's a lot of other sites like Washington Post at one point was written in it, um, National Geographic and uh, PBS, a bunch of others use Python and Django. So um, definitely not going anywhere as far as uh, a language to learn. It's very easy for a lot of people to pick up. So um, that's why it's number three on this list. If you look at its trends, it's just skyrocketing as far as jobs and opportunity. Number two is Java. Um, Java's been on a dominant player on this list for forever, uh, for at least um, going on almost two decades now, I guess. And it's definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, Java is like your your typical programming corporate gig, where you know you have programmers the nine to fives that. Are using Java to, to run servers and all kinds of back-end processes. It's good for collaboration among large teams. It's all object-oriented. Um, so similar to C Sharp, it's um, it was actually uh, they're owned by Oracle now, but uh, Java was developed by Sun Microsystems in the late 90s, and um, they they did it as a means of being able to collaborate amongst large development teams and. Uh, they were definitely uh, very successful in that because they inspired Microsoft to build their .NET framework and then C Sharp on top of that in the early 2000s. So um, Java and C Sharp can control and dominate the, the corporate uh, IT world as far as, like I said, the 9 to 5 programming gigs. So if you're looking to get into a big corporation, um, Java or C Sharp is definitely a good option for you. Number one on this list is uh, JavaScript. And JavaScript by far and away is um, is becoming... Uh, the most important language to learn. Um, whether you're using Python, C Sharp, Java, Ruby, um, whatever sort of web development language you're trying to use, you're going to have to be really good at JavaScript. Um, JavaScript now with Node.js, uh, Node um, which is built on the V8 Chromium uh, engine, and um, that is actually an, an engine that has a JavaScript API, but it's actually machine level code uh, written in C and C++, so it's, it's lightning quick. Um, compared to Ruby on Rails or even um, Python Django, and uh, it would blow away both of those um, technologies in speed. Um, it's fully asynchronous, has all the uh, asynchronous nature of JavaScript built into it. Um, JavaScript's also a major player in any sort of web plugin, um, whether it's like photo viewing um, or even writing um, video games in a web browser, which is being done through WebGL, which is a uh, OpenGL port um, to JavaScript for web browsers. So as we move into the future, I mean, we may see, um, we're, we're seeing WebRTC, which is um, chat clients and sharing your, your, your screen with a you know, fellow um, you know, friend across the world through your browser. All that's being done through JavaScript now. It can be done with other technologies as well, but the, the bottom line is that JavaScript is slowly replacing what we relied on these other languages to do. So um, if you know JavaScript, uh, you definitely can get a job if, you, if, if you're an expert level. Now, JavaScript uh, I would say is is very um, is more challenging than than what initial um, tutorials and things might try to teach you with it. I mean, it's it's truly an art. Um, it takes a long time to master. 
a long time to get right and uh, there's some definite quirks about that that make that about the language itself that make people you know say javascript is a terrible language and all that but um i mean don't don't believe that hype uh, javascript is definitely not going anywhere it's it's truly emerged as the alternative um, to server-side technologies it can be the server-side and client-side technology that you need so if you're trying to be um, hip and move into the future as far as jobs I mean I would say JavaScript is by far and away the most popular and most important language to learn alright guys so that sums up the top 10 lists uh, that I've created once again this is all opinion based um, I did do some research into it I'm a programmer a senior programmer for a major corporation so I have some insight into the industry more than you know a blogger that might work for Mashable that's never programmed a day in his life but um, you know, these are all just, you know, opinion based and there's plenty of languages I haven't listed and there's plenty of, um, you know, there's plenty of different arguments that can be made for each one um, to be in a different position on this list. But ultimately, I feel like it, it sums up the programming world uh, and where we are right now pretty well. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Bye.